There's no point in talking about Linux if I can't edit my videos and record in Linux. I would say the Windows counterpart would be Sony Vegas Pro, and that's saying a lot. Kaden Live. I, 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 I. George Bush doesn't care about black people. I came in on the Linux discussion. Um, I I run Linux. It's awesome. Even runs a lot of Windows software. Uh, there's something people can Google called Play on Linux and check into that. The main stigma that I see that's haunting Linux is mainly the fact that Microsoft takes it so seriously now that they have a Linux propaganda campaign going. I mean, it's funny to check into like their little journals and blogs and stuff to where they're claiming that Linux is not as secure as Windows. Okay, well, wait a minute. Linux can't get spyware and viruses and all that crap, but wait, and Windows can, but they're saying it's, you know, people just listen to the, to the corporations and the, you know, governments and stuff too much. And another problem, like the biggest one that I've seen is when I try to explain Linux to people, the thing that they just have a heck of a time trying to wrap their brains around is when I tell them it can literally look, do, and feel anything you want, any way you want. And they're just kind of like, huh? Because they're so used to limitations. They're so used to Microsoft telling them, this is how it is, and if you don't like it, too bad. They're so used to Apple telling them, this is how it is, and if you don't like it, too bad. So when you throw in the concept of, it can look, feel, and do like anything you want. You could, you could Google search on image search, you know, Linux uh, screen captures, and every desktop practically looks like an entirely different operating system because the end user has decided to choose to look and feel. People just don't get it. They're too used to limitations. Also, in a sense, too, as well, when you look at that comparison with Microsoft versus Linux, it's almost in the idea of a system like the monetary system into the idea of a resource-based economy. The potential that a resource-based economy can have that look and feel and do exactly whatever you want. And some people look in the monetary system and go, huh? You know, so it's almost like a double exposure, like a fixed position. So it's, it's, yeah, the quick I can hear, I just, you know, mean and evil trying to, to dictate how you're going to do things.
Yeah, we're a entire generation of people pissed off at the system. Have a quiz, you guys, and if you don't know this, I'm gonna have to ask you to stay after class. It has 184 million people currently using it. It is a web browser, and it's totally free, and is maintained by the Mozilla Corporation. Maybe this will help. Any guesses? Any guesses? That's right, it's Mozilla Firefox. Um, 75% of people use this guy up here, but you may know that its wonderful secure counterpart is actually an open source program. So number one was Firefox, and now I'm going to show you four other open source or free programs that can do everything that your paid software can do and more. So let's launch into it. This will allow you to create tables to write documents for homework assignments. Uh, its paid counterpart is this guy right here, Microsoft Word, and will actually let you export in Microsoft Word format. And this baby is called Open Office. Did I mention you can also create spreadsheets and PowerPoint compatible presentations with it? Okay, so a lot of us already have OpenOffice installed on our computer, because let's face it, we geeks are not going to drop $150 on something that will just let us write a letter to our grandma. So I thought I'd explain, because I've been throwing this term around a lot, uh, what open source actually is. Open source generally refers to software that is released, including the source code, with no restrictions on downloading, modifying, or advertising the work. An open source program usually starts when developers publish their code where other developers can learn about it, download it, and play with it. As you can see, an example of where developers put their code is SourceForge. Now that we have a little clearer picture on what open source means, I'd like to delve into number three. This, speaking of pictures, will help you edit photos, modify them, create animated GIFs, you can morph faces, you can do pretty much everything that Photoshop can do. And since I don't know a single soul who doesn't know about Photoshop, I'd like to show you GIMP. Time for the sexy name. The GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP, is much smaller and faster than Photoshop. You can clone at filters, mess around with layers, and you can use it on Windows, Linux, or Mac. It costs us absolutely nothing, and we're editing photos, and we're writing documents like it's going out of style, and all this is getting to be kind of exhausted, and we want to talk to our friends. Well, we have an open source program that can do that, and that's called Pigeon. You can use your Yahoo Messenger, AOL, uh, MSN, ICQ, the list goes on and on, and you can manage all of these at the same time, so you can have a huge mass conversation going on while you're doing everything else for free. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot, Pigeon is also cross-platform, so whether you have Windows, Linux, or the Mac, you can still use it. So while you were talking with your buddies on Pigeon, they sent you a video for you to edit, knowing that you had Sony Vegas Pro. So you were going to edit the videos, you were going to splice them all together, and you find out that you don't have the disc, and it's going to cost you $600 to get a new copy of Sony Vegas Pro. Well... You're in luck. There is a software, open source again, called KDN Live, and it's going to help you do almost everything that you can do in Sony Vegas, including adding titles, transitions, and pretty much anything under the sun, so your video can still be edited. KDN Live is available for Linux and, well, Linux. Wait, 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 wait. I see what you did there. KDN Live is for Linux and you have Windows, so what are you going to do? Well, you could install Linux, or you could download a Vinamux, which is much like Windows Movie Maker, except it's more stable, and it will definitely help you quickly and easily get that video to your friend. So, as you can see, open source is the clear winner here, and it definitely helps create a good support system in the software community.
Did that thing not have a hard drive? <laughs> no, I don't think that thing did. I don't think the original Enterprise had a hard drive. Yeah, I just like, I turned it on and never turned it off and had all these floppy disks. <laughs> they had floppy disk in the original uh, Enterprise? Yeah, everything they do on the computer, they have to stick in a little disk. It doesn't look like a floppy disk. It's about the same size as a three and a half inch floppy, but it, it does not did you look like a floppy disk. It's just solid. We're going back to that technology. Did you know that? We're going back to the floppy disk? Something similar to that. People are running Linux off of the CD-ROM. Come on! Yeah, what's yeah. wrong with that? It's Canapix. It's one of the best versions of Nix out there. Canapix. no A in it. The same thing. There's no A in it. They tried teaching us that in college. My God, I told a teacher what a stick it. I'm over here recompiling kernels on my freaking Linux box, and he's teaching us how to freaking go into the GUI. Wait a minute, Canapix boots into it. Yeah, it sure does. And it's not Canapix because it's an O and not A. You know, it. That, that's cool. It's fucking ridiculous. But, you know, I want to go back. You know, I don't want to. Uh, Check this out. Everyone out there, run Linux because Microsoft is a corporate dictatorship who wants to buy your soul. And then that's the Matrix. Sweet. <laughs> This does not remind me of you. It looks to me like Eli took the red pill, apparently, but, but anyway, as far as a concept like that, just think of, like, you know, Star Trek-style holodecks, right? Take that, add an internet connection, and you're bringing a whole new meaning to CyberSec. Tech support. Password. Tech support. Tech support. Tech support. Okay. Tech support. The number you have reached is not available or no longer in service. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Run out of pigs. We're going to run outside. Yes, don't scare the neighbors. Yes, everybody. We know now that uh, two men, uh, uh, voice chat, make it. Oh, my God. Get talking, guys. Guess one. Where are you from? Ooh, you. Denmark. Yeah, you're guess one. You're from where? From Denmark. Denmark. Well, then you're definitely not a U.S. Marine sergeant. <laughs> yeah, right. <really. laughs> Have fun. E3, United States Marines, Corporal. But that's all the information I'm going to give you. Sultan Hulka is signing off. Signing off. five and a quarter and lo and behold there's a freaking CD in there. I was laughing so hard and she's all just like, yeah, it out, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. She stuck a CD in the five and a quarter disc drive? This was in the late nineties, but yep. <laughs> yeah, I had I mean, I used to do computer work in the you know the nineties and up to about two thousand and I would have so many people doing that. So many people did that. And it's like, you know, AOL CD in a, a five and a half disk drive and it, it tries to read it, read it from boot and makes all kinds of crappy noise and won't boot because it's got this thing in it. Oh, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Hey, fellas. Hey, hey, what are you looking at? Linux. Are you running Linux? <laughs> <laughs> Linux. Looks like you're running Linux. Uh, no. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yes, I'm running Linux. Not me. Okay, Mac. Oh, friends here. I couldn't help myself. Just a good minute.
I see a major malfunction here. Um, there's literally a major malfunction. Smoke came out of my computer. Don't ever try it at home. That's all I've got to say. Let's plug it in. It's going to say, hey, I see you within a new device. And it's going to load in the appropriate drivers. You'll notice that this scanner will load. <laughs> oh my god. Right along. That must be uh, that must be why we're not shipping Windows 98. Absolutely, absolutely. This shit's got to go. I agree, 100%. The world is like a ride at an amusement park, and when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round, it has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because this is just a ride. And we kill those people. <laughs> Shut him up. We have a lot invested in this ride. Shut him up. Look at my furrows of worry. My big bank account and my family. This has to be a ride. But we always kill those good guys who try and sell us that. You ever notice that? And let the demons run them off. But it doesn't matter because it's just a ride. And you can change it anytime you want. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money, a choice right now between fear and love. The eyes of fear, once you put bigger locks on your door, buy guns, close yourself off. The eyes of love, instead, see all of us as one. Here's what we can do to change the world right now to a better ride. Take all that money we spend on weapons and defense each year and instead spend it feeding, clothing, and educating the poor of the world, which it would many times over, not one human being excluded, and we can explore space together, both inner and outer, forever. I just want him off my couch. You were being transferred to a Geek Squad agent.